today's video, we're doing something for the first time. We are fleshing and salting our very first bison hide. Oh my. Feels like a fish. Take a bite. Yeah. This is it. We'll have our first hide done. Bullets over here munching on a <laughs> bison snack. Did he growl at you? <laughs> That's hilarious. He was mad at you. Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. Got a good buddy here, Colby Lovelady from Tuttle, Oklahoma. He's probably about an hour away yep. from us. It's a good friend of mine, and we met two or three years ago. Yep. Just in the bison world, we're bison friends. Colby is the secretary for the Oklahoma Bison Association, and we've been doing bison stuff together for, I don't know, a couple years now. We're doing something fun today, something a little different. We're not just bison ranch today. We are about to blast a fresh bison. I should say fresh. It's been frozen. Colby's had experience with this before. I never have. It's still a little partially frozen. We've been working on it for about, what, 30 minutes or 45 yeah. minutes yeah. or so. Colby's here to teach us how. We're, we're going to go through this together because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so we got salt. We got like 100, well, we got like 300 pounds of salt. And Colby's power washer, you got to have at least a 3,500. Yes, sir. To do this. He's got a 3,700, so it's plenty of ammo here. We're going to go through this. He's going to start blasting it with the power washer. Never shown you this process, this side of what we do. We go out there and hang out with Big Joe and do all the fun things, right? But there's a whole nother side to the bison world. And we're doing something that a lot of people have done by hand, hands and knees, scraping. We're doing kind of a new method that's started here recently, I yeah. guess you could say. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. You're that's very welcome. Work. You're very welcome. Woo, there we go. All right. Get that pressure built up. And you can already see that what you've done. I know. That's it. That's wow. it. This and is flushing. That's it. That's the flesh that's got to come off. And. The best way I found it it's still a time consuming process, but yeah. pick a section and work your way down. Oh, okay. Whereas instead of bouncing around the whole time, pick a section and just work that Go section. With it. And then the next row. Okay. actually got some meat in that one yeah there's some there's some muscle and some tissue in that one your dogs will like that one yeah they will yeah so yeah this is the liner of the skin super soft oh man that feels it like a so fish it feels so like good. a king <laughs> it feels like a catfish, like a channel catfish. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Like this is super rough. There's fat and tissue and muscle right there that the processor is just, you know, they're speeding through it. Feels weird. Oh yeah. So is that all you have to take off or do you gotta keep nope. going? That that section right there is good. Oh that was yeah, it's that crazy. Wasn't super bad I know. And right. It's just you just gotta do that and cross the this whole is thing, hump obviously. Fat. That's why there's so many big chunks here, it's hump fat. Yeah, some of it will. And you know, you gotta find what angle is best for like each little piece, you know? You can work at the top, go to the side, work it up from down here, just to get all those angles to really start cutting away the yeah. sinews and all that, so. But yeah, that's that difference is wild, what that it does. That texture is so yeah. similar to like a, like a channel catfish. And the thing about these bison hides is they're so thick, they can take a power exactly. washer. If it was a deer hide, more than likely, no, it ripped yeah, through Yeah, this it. much pressure would blast yeah, through it. Yeah, because bison thickness. You want to give it a shot? Yeah, sure.
Do I need to stay on it longer, probably? Or is that okay? You I could get a little bit of this off, but no, like, especially up towards the spine where it's thicker, it's, it's okay, okay to have this little, because this little, little stuff right here, it'll dry. Okay. It'll dry out when we salt it. Okay. But these all big pieces, obviously. Need to come off. Yeah. So as further I come down, it should come off. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is crazy. Yeah, dude, that's perfect. It's just slowly pushing it down. Yep. So if we were fleshing it, we would just be scraping it, you know? Yep, if we were fleshing, we would, we would have this stretched across two tables and we would each have little surgical knives cutting, hand cutting Every this, single one of them. Bending over our lower back. That's some so, grunt work. And another great advantage of this is when you do this for someone who finishes a hide, when they do the actual tanning process, they'll normally charge you a cheaper rate for you doing this part and the drying right. part. You're, you're doing half of the work. Right you're doing here. half the work, yep. It's already got a hole in it from the processor. From the processor, yep. And like this stuff, that's probably gonna get cut off anyways. Okay. From the tanner. We're about three quarters of the way done on the one side. And then so. bullet, uh, you know, he's just being a dog. He's helping. He's helping. Yeah, he is helping. That's a good way to put it. We ran out of gas, so Marissa is on her way to go get some more gas for us. But it's uh, it's pretty messy. Definitely yeah. got to have some proper clothing on. Uh, sure. Waterproof boots, for sure. I can already tell you. These are some of the things that I've just experienced. Glasses for the water coming back to you. But you can definitely see the difference of where Colby and I hit. You know, people will may mention something about you know a hole here that hole was already there and that's just simply from the processor yeah. you can see them they're probably in a hurry a lot of yeah. the times or yep and yeah and usually you got to pay them a little extra to take their time so yeah um, and, and and they're not they're not professional skinners right you know they're yeah. not they're not in there to get the perfect hide for you you got a honeybee Interesting. <laughs> Interesting place for a honeybee to be. But you know, those holes too, you know, whenever this thing's done and it's flipped over, you're not hardly going to be able to tell those are even there because the hair is so thick. Yeah, um, right. Yeah, if we so. flipped it over and we're feeling, like if you put your hand in here, you feel it's just, there's a whole lot of hair in there. We're basically taking product from an animal from our meat side of our business. Both of Colby and I do the same thing. You're taking a product that can essentially be thrown away. We're repurposing it so that people can. <laughs> he likes that. He says thank you. <laughs> Got him a little, you know, something to gnaw on. We're taking something and repurposing it and making it useful to somebody, not just yep. ourselves, of course. But for sure, we can uh, do this work. It's definitely some grunt work to go in this. But once you do this, you make it available to send it to a tannery. And after the salt and drying process. Yes, then you then you can get it to yes. to either a lone person that does their own tanning or for more of a, a factory tan place. Yep. Once we once we get it salted and dried, it's it's ready to go. It's ready to go after that. But you just got to get to this point of salting it and fleshing it mm -hmm. because you could pay somebody to do this at some tanneries. Some tanneries don't flesh them for you. They'll only take them flesh. Yep. Yep. And salt it. That's true. So that's something I, I feel like we've learned, trying to, once we got into this industry, there's only very few places in the country, well, close to Oklahoma, mm -hmm. that will flesh them for you. They're going to charge you to flesh them, and then they're going to charge you, you know, obviously to tan it, to get that soft tan. But 
so we're kind of doing the grunt work here doing this and we'll salt it but it's uh it's working i think it's really working and it is it works good it's such a thick hide i mean guys this is american bison right here that's it's, it is a thick hide and there's a reason why the natives use this for everything yep tps clothes i mean shoes i mean everything everything there's a reason and we're kind of slightly experiencing that right now so imagine sitting here having to carve all this stuff with yeah. rocks or bones or whatever tools yep. that they had yep. makes you appreciate down on your hands and knees down on your hands and knees getting all this tissue off and i think they had to nail the they had to nail down the edges they had to, to nail stretch them down, it. pin them down for sure in the ground yep and stretch it enough to be able to yep get enough force to scrape all of it off and some people do the brain tan yes so you can get the brain and deer's the same way you can get the brain from a bison and this is how i think uh, they did it hundreds of years ago yep is they would flesh it with their tools like what basically we're doing and then they would go back over it with the chemical from the brain and smush it into now i'm not a professional at this but this is just i'm a history guy but they would smash it into and work it into it and i know easy to talk about but a whole lot of hours oh yeah whole lot of hours when you go to brain tan these things i mean and think about smushing up brain and rubbing it into a hide yeah i mean the fact that they were that it's just awesome how they do that so basically what you're doing but in a yeah i'm making and and trying to be careful here without yeah this cutting this, holes in it it's easy to do this is the hump and so that skin and fat is really thick it up is here. very thick here so here's a tail that's been cut off and then here where colby's at is the what you'd see the hump so that big tall portion of those top of those shoulders mm -hmm. on a bison this is that so there is hump fat here yep uh built up now most of this tissue is muscle that you see yeah. uh, built on the bison which makes them way different than a lot of animals what oh, marissa's called me There you go. <laughs> oh man. Take a bite. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a squid. Yeah. Alright, so first half is done, knocked out, right here, we ran out of gas, but probably took us, I don't know, hour, a little over an hour at least, probably to do that half, what do you think, Colby? Yeah, yeah, at probably least. a little over an hour. Here, you can see the major difference here of where we've already power washed, pulled it down and see what's left. This is it. We'll have our first hide done in a little over two hours, <laughs> Yeah, and then we can yeah. salt it, so that's next. Colby and I are going to get the other half knocked out. Wonder why. Sun. Decomposing already. Yep. Maybe. It's... Yeah, but not, not so no, fast. No, I mean, like, not, not, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just already.
awesome, dude. Yeah, dude. That's... It really does. Absolutely not. No, get out of here. Okay. <laughs> okay, buddy. Feel the... I'm going to hold this because I feel like it's going to give a little... There you go. Mm. I can feel the cockaburras in this. Oh, yeah. And he'll work all this these little pieces out. I mean, he'll get it all clean. All right, I think we can manage that. It looks like a coat right now. I know. Put it on. Okay, we'll go. Come over here, Colby. Yep. Whoa, we might chicken. need to be on the same side. We're going to go around here. You got so many roosters. Oh, so we got. Okay. So it'll be nice and short, sort of. I'm just going to kind of. What are you going to do? I'm just going to try to get all this on my shoulder. That's what I was scared got to do. Oh, that's not so bad. No. No, not really. It's quite. Yeah, I'm I'm making me a vest one of these days. Oh, vest, I'm yes, straight up. You know, right at the the spine hump, right right down my back. Yes. You know, just. Uh. <laughs> the big man himself. There he is. He's hiding back there. We'll go right through that door. The one behind. Him They're is both kind of nice. The one behind him is. Yeah, wait till he steps out. He's a yep. nice little bull. He's a little taller. He's one of the ones that we worked. Okay, so we're gonna just stretch this out. Is it this way? I think so. So that's the tail. You can see the hump. Oh yeah, the, the, the hump. Uh -huh. Yep. Actually, this front leg looks really good. I don't think we gotta do any work right here. Okay. I have at least eight. Okay, get 50 pounds. I was trying to be easy. Yeah, I got one a little too hard and ripped it a little. But imagine doing this, Marissa, around the whole thing. Oh, I know. Uh, Who is it? Randy's. Sometimes calls. From the bison skin. Um, the meat processor. But Daddy, do you... Um... <laughs> what? <laughs> Alright, you ready to... Bullet, he's still over here just gnawing. Going to town on this. Buy some head. Salt, we got fine salt. That's all I could really find. Fine salt, salt. Uh, it, it also says, it says you can do fine salt. I think you could do fine salt, or you could do non-iodized, too, is what I saw. Or, how does this work? You just literally, that's it? Oh, no, I was just... No, I meant like you can spread it by your hand like that. You can, but you can get the whole bag and get a little bit on the, a little bit of a good pile on the edges so that you can spread. Start dumping it, and then we'll we'll get down with our hands and spread it. Spread it out. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Help. Yeah. Girls are ready to get get it dirty. Snow. It does look like snow. Well, that's just fifty pounds worth. Look at it. You can already see it starting to soak some of this up. Yeah. Okay. Let's spread it. Yeah, just spread it out even. Put it all over the skin. <laughs> Daddy, can you hold my puppy? She in, no, I mean, I'm going to hold your puppy. Okay, we're going to put him right here so he can watch. No, you're good. Just get up in there with every little edge. And absorbs moisture so, so you're basically just drying it. you're drying it yeah it's part of the drying process and so what's up what's up you say hold so much because you mean like oh. he is what what babe if you put too much no, salt on it it won't be able to absorb all the moisture right is that what you mean uh no too much salt's better than not enough salt okay. it, it yeah. won't hurt if there's too much salt it won't hurt nothing that, because that would just mean, no. 
it would be able to retain more moisture. Here, keep it on the hod. Yeah. So you. In other words, it's just going to stop on the bottom layer. That's what and. And so once you scrape this off with a broom or a, or a squeegee, like if you have one of those squeegee brooms, yeah. um, scrape this all off, and once you put that second round on, then not even after that second round, you'll really be able to tell a, tell a difference. It really does a good job. Get after it. <laughs> it's like confetti. Hey, at least we don't have to find it for the next 10 years. Right? What do they call it? No. Devil's dust? No. Like glitter, you know? Like from Christmas oh, and all my, that stuff? That so you find it. <laughs> also, good tip. Um, we may put a little bit little bit more on the hunt. Yeah, it's okay. already and getting a little here. Any so edge that think? looks thin to you. Hi guys, hey, welcome back. So what Marissa and Colby and I did is after we got it power washed, Colby and I brought it in here into our basically tool shed. This is sealed off away from no animals, no weather, anything like that here in our barn. It's a good section, so nothing can bother it. But with this bull bison hide here, what we did was we brought it in and we put the first layer of salt on it. And what salt is for, and we basically use just fine salt. And what the salt is for is to dry up and pull any type of moisture that's left in this hide uh, to keep it from decomposing and then maybe losing the hair. So we don't want all that. So what we're doing basically at this point now is we're prepping to send this hide to a tannery because when you do this, um, it helps to have it already done. You've done most of the legwork right here by fleshing it, which was the power washing stage, salting it the first round, and so you can see the excess salt there. So me and Colby and Marissa spread out the salt. And then yesterday, Marissa and I, on day four of salt, we raked and pushed all the other salt to the side on the first layer. And then we laid a second layer of salt and we're gonna do that four more days now. Um, and so you can see the difference in color there of that one. Um, but now we've got our third layer or second layer on. The first layer was 150 pounds. The second layer was 100 pounds and we got everything spread out. And it looks like a lot of the moisture has been pulled off, which is exciting. So I will just say this is our first time doing this and it is a lot of work. I give so much credit to the Native Americans, and I know that the power washing side of it was definitely not near as much work as the Native Americans put into this way back when. And um, so, a lot of credit to them. So, we've got two more days of our second layer of salt to pull all that moisture. We'll take it outside, we'll hang it up, uh, we'll let it air out maybe one day for a couple hours, really get the air going. Um, in the sun for a little bit, not very long, and then we'll pull it back in, and then it's ready to go to the tannery at that point. So we're basically doing all the work to get it to a tannery, and then from there, it could take a long time, depending on how busy they are, eight to 10 months possibly, for a tannery to turn this into a nice bison hide, and that will be the final product. Can't wait to see it. We're doing the legwork now on our first bison hide. 